<clears throat> so, would you agree then? He's taking this theme and he's saying we can talk about those who are pursuing each. So there are two classes that he's singling out of lovers, and they follow respectively those two gods. Agree? Are we together? Yes. Would you agree the whole problem is first that there must be some kinship between the followers of Zeus and correspondingly with Ares and then comes the problem of love so that it presupposes that there are already followers of each of these, and now we want to see what happens to them when they are opened up to this curious problem of the problem of love. Now, he who is a follower of Zeus, when seized by love, <clears throat> can bear a heavier burden of the winged god. But those who are servants of Ares and followed in his train, when they've been seized by love and think they've been wronged in any way by the beloved, become murderous and are ready to sacrifice themselves and the beloved. So it is with the follower of each and of the other gods. He lives, so far as he's able, honoring and imitating that god, so long as he's uh, uncorrupted and is living his first life on earth. And that way he behaves and conducts himself towards his beloved and towards all others. <clears throat> and so with all the other gods and and what do these beings do, do, who follow it's one thing that's constant to them all imitate the particular God that they're pursuing. Now each one chooses his love from the ranks of the beautiful. I, now, I want to just start with a
<clears throat> okay, this is the general, agree, this is the general case, agree, this is the general case, before he then goes into Zeus. So, tell me, what do you make of it? What are we talking about? Is this literally what he's talking about? What does this mean? God is. It's all male. It's all male. But I mean, each person has a different God. This is in general first. Right, but then he says here, that, you know, after he says things about Aries. Yeah, that's right. See, it starts with, and so it is with the followers with the follower of each of the other gods, right? right uh, each of the other gods. So therefore, it's of the whole set. Agree? It's of the whole set. So this is a general remark covering the whole set of all the different gods and the people that follow each of them. Do you agree? Take a look. Well, um, Sir? Um, do you know for sure these are male? I don't know. I, I just wonder. You know, we might be trapped in English. Uh, I don't know. This is uh, anyone familiar with English? You, you. I am. Oh, what does that signify? Uh, the male gender. How about this? Same. And this? Same. And this? Mm. And this? Yes. Oh. So, what kind of a love are they talking about? Oh, uh, sexual. Oh. Oh, oh. Look, we only have one principle to decide this, you know, and it's very easy. We've all agreed to it many times. We never debate it. When in doubt, ask Rondo. There, see? I think we should consult the Greek. What's the Greek say? Okay, ask your Greek. And remember that principle. <laughs> never look your Greek in the mouth. <laughs> right? And also, Thomas uh, Toothless Taylor. Toothless. Why is it important? I guess because we want to know what he means. Because we want to know yeah. what women wait, wait, do. That is, is that a good principle? Good. good. Yeah. Because we want to know what women get out of this deal. Oh, who this cares about them? Well, but uh, huh. I do. How was that? Pretty good. Hmm. No. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's maybe. ask Rhonda again. <laughs> I mean, maybe they have a whole thing naked to do, which is even better, you know. I just read. I don't know which way it falls. Yeah. I just go by the words and see what comes up. So where are we? We're saying the plight of the lover mentions two. Then he says there's something common to all of them, and that is they honor and imitate the particular God. All right, good. Good, good, good. And now when this guy is seized by love, this becomes the issue. 
Alright, well, he says, well, how does this person when seized by love? Well, he then chooses the beloved according to that right? Here's the problem, you see, now, this person um, who's chosen, right, and now we're talking about the relationship with the god Zeus, right? assuming these both are followers of Zeus, then this is what they're doing. And to the degree that is the case, then you might say then that uh, at first the separation between the ideal, uh, it could be a huge equilateral triangle, but over time it diminishes. Uh, they become more like the God whom they honor and imitate. Let's see if that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. The followers of Zeus <clears throat> desire that the soul of him who they love be like Zeus. So they seek for one of philosophical and lordly nature. And when they find him and love him, they do all they can to give him such a character. If they had previously had experience, they learn them from all who can teach them anything. They seek after information themselves. And when they search eagerly within themselves to find the nature of their God, hey, they're successful. Because they have been compelled to keep their eyes fixed upon the God. And as they reach him, right, as they reach and grasp him by memory, they're inspired and receive from him character and habits as far as is possible for man to have part of in God. Hey, this process of becoming life, right, is through memory. And what's quite interesting, and I'm sure you focused on it, at that time then, and they receive from, they receive in return, see? They receive in return. All right, they receive in return. character and habits. From the God. Mm -hmm. 
as far it is possible for a man to have a part in God. Now they consider the beloved, the cause of all this. They think it really comes from the beloved. Unskilled, therefore, in his metaphysics. Now they consider the beloved the cause of all this, so they love him more than before. And if they draw the waters of their inspiration from Zeus, like the Bacchanites, they pour it out upon the beloved and make him as far as possible like their God. And those who follow after now another, Hera. That's a god. Right. So Zeus, now we do the same thing for Hera. And those who followed after Hera seek a kingly nature. And when they have found such a one, they act in a corresponding manner towards him in all respects. Likewise, followers of Apollo and of each of the gods go out and seek for their beloved a youth whose nature accords with that of the god And when they have gained his affection by imitating the God themselves and by persuasion and education, they lead the beloved to the conduct and nature of the God. So far as each of them can do so, they exhibit no jealousy or meanness towards the loved one, but endeavor by every means in their power to lead him to the likeness of the God whom they honor. Thus, the desire of the true lovers and the imitation into the mysteries of love which they teach, if they accomplish what they desire in the way I have described, I described, ah, that's beautiful. It brings happiness from the inspired lover to the beloved one, to the loved one. And if he be captured, the fair one who's captured is caught in the following way. All right? So, how... To capture the beloved. And we don't want to go into that until we're clear that this is the case. Is that fair? I mean, any questions about it? Because this, he's playing something interesting, is he not? No, jump in. To be clear, what is the case? We shouldn't go into how to capture the beloved until we're clear that this is the case. Is that a question? Everything we just read, is that? No, no. Would you agree from what has been described, now he has to talk about how to capture the beloved. What he's been talking about so far is in general how the relationship will proceed. But he hasn't described how you... It's this now. Up to this point, it's been, it's been this, see? Now to talk about that, he needs a new model. All right, needs a new model. So, are we together so far? I rather wish I knew more clear, more, more about the process of making the beloved like the God. Mm-hmm. I rather wish I knew more about that. I mean, say it's habits and, what's the other word, character? <clears throat> That's it? Yeah. Now? <clears throat> now we're going to go there. It's this. Mm. Or, actually, it's, uh, 
primarily it's this, the power of this, and then consequently it is this. But first it's this. And secondarily, going back. I have to admit I found that confusing as well because he uses the word the flood of he receives the flood of yearning. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like the he who receives it. I'm gonna it sounds like it's the lover. I keep looking at the language and trying to see. It seems like the, you know that he's looking at the beloved, the beloved is beautiful. Mm -hmm. He receives this mm -hmm. inflow from the beloved and uh, describes it as yearning. Mm -hmm. Peter, when you read that, you read uh, imitation, and it's really initiation. Mm -hmm. You know, the initiation into the mysteries of love. That is the key element. The I, you know, I want to find out more about that. It's, it's whole section of a different state of mind than what's above. They lead the beloved to the conduct and nature of God, no, no jealousy or meanness, right? Every means to lead into the likeness of God and the honor, thus okay. the desire of the true lovers. Okay, Bill is at 251, right? Is that it's right? on page 493, is 253C. Right, because how to become newly initiated is 251. Okay. Okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah, we proceed. Looks like everybody's going for it to me. Nobody's saying they don't understand anything. Thank goodness. Nobody's saying anything. It's easy from now on. Mm. <clears throat> okay, we have the two horses. Two indeed. In the beginning of this tale, I divided each soul into three parts. Two of which had the form of horses, the third of a charioteer. Let us retain this division. Now, of the horses, we say one is good, the other bad. But we didn't define what the goodness of the one and the badness of the other was. That we must now do. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jump in. Glad to read. Oh, jump in. Slow. Okay, slow. Now, of the horses we say one is good and the other bad, but we did not define what the goodness of the one and the badness of the other was. That we must now do. The horse that stands at the right hand is upright and has clean limbs. He carries his neck high, has an aquiline nose, is white in color, and has dark eyes. He is a friend of honor, joined with temperance and modesty, and a follower of true glory. He needs no whip but is guided only by the word of command and by reason. The other, however, is crooked, heavy, ill put together. His neck is short and thick, his nose flat, his color dark, his eyes gray and bloodshot. He is a friend of insolence and pride, is shaggy-eared and deaf, hardly obedient to whip and spurs. Now when the charioteer beholds the love-inspiring vision, and his whole soul is warmed by the sight, and is full of the tickling and pricklings of yearning, the horse that is obedient to the charioteer, constrained then as always by modesty, 
controls himself and does not leap upon the beloved. But the other no longer heeds the pricks or the whip of the charioteer, but springs wildly forward, causing all possible trouble to his mate and to the charioteer, and forcing them to approach the beloved and propose the joys of love. And they at first pull back indignantly, and will not be forced to do terrible and unlawful deeds. But finally, as the trouble has no end, they go forward with him, yielding and agreeing to do his bidding. And they come to the Beloved and behold his radiant face. <clears throat> and as the charioteer looks upon him, his memory is borne back to the true nature of beauty. And he sees it standing with modesty upon a pedestal of chastity. And when he sees this, he is afraid and falls backward in reverence. And in falling, he is forced to pull the reins so violently backward as to bring both horses upon their haunches, the one quite willing, since he does not oppose him, but the unruly beast very unwilling. And as they go away, one horse in his shame and wonder wets all the soul with sweat, but the other, as soon as he is recovered from the pain of the bit and the fall, before he has fairly taken breath, breaks forth into angry reproaches, bitterly reviling his mate and the charioteer for their cowardice and lack of manhood in deserting their posts and breaking their agreement. And again, in spite of their unwillingness, he urges them forward and hardly yields to their prayer that he postpone the matter to another time. Then when the time comes which they have agreed upon, they pretend that they have forgotten it, but he reminds them, struggling and neighing and pulling, he forces them again with the same purpose to approach the Beloved One. And when they are near him, he lowers his head, raises his tail, takes the bit in his teeth, and pulls shamelessly. The effect upon the charioteer is the same as before, but more pronounced. He falls back like a racer from the starting room, pulls the bit backward even more violently than before from the teeth of the unruly horse, covers his scurrilous tongue and jaws with blood, and forces his legs and haunches to the ground, causing him much pain. Now, when the bad horse has gone through the same experience many times, and has ceased from his unruliness, he is humbled and follows henceforth the wisdom of the charioteer. And when he sees the beautiful one, he is overwhelmed with fear. And so from that time on, the soul of the lover follows the beloved in reverence and awe. Now, okay, what's happened? So far. Dark horse. So, what's happening to the dark horse? It seems like he's getting a tra training or a, a training. Right. And finally, from moving from insolence, pride, death, and not obedient to the charioteer, humbled. Mm -hmm. Right. Now looks mm -hmm. upon the beloved with reverence and awe, and therefore plateau. Right. And he's overwhelmed mm -hmm. with fear. Agree? Mm -hmm. No capture. Mm -hmm. no. Wisdom would be better translated. Okay. Next chapter? Forethought. Wouldn't. Next chapter? <clears throat> Agree? Yeah. All right. Now the beloved, since he receives all service from his lover, as if he were a god, 
And since the lover is not feigning, but is really in love, and since the beloved himself is by nature friendly to him who serves him, although he may at some earlier time have been prejudiced by his schoolfellows or others who said that it was a disgrace to yield to a lover, and may for that reason have repulsed his lover, yet as time goes on, his youth and destiny cause him to admit him to his society. For it is the law of fate that evil can never be a friend to evil, and that good must always be a friend to good. And when the lover is thus admitted, and the privilege of conversation and intimacy has been granted him, his goodwill, as it shows itself in close intimacy, astonishes the beloved. <coughs> who discovers that the friendship of all his other friends and relatives is as nothing when compared with that of his inspired lover. And as this intimacy continues, and the lover comes near and touches the beloved in the gymnasia and in their general intercourse, then the fountain of that stream which Zeus, when he was in love with Ganymede, called desire, flows copiously upon the lover, and some of it flows into him, and some, when he is filled, overflows outside. And just as the wind or an echo rebounds from smooth, hard surfaces, and returns whence it came, so the stream of beauty passes back into the beautiful one, through the eyes, the natural inlet to the soul where it reanimates the passages of the feathers, waters them, and makes the feathers begin to grow, filling the soul of the loved one with love. So he is in love, but he knows not with whom. He does not understand his own condition and cannot explain it. Like one who has caught a disease of the eyes from another, he can give no reason for it. He sees himself in his lover as in a mirror, but is not conscious of the fact. And in the lover's presence, like him, he ceases from his pain. And in his absence, like him, he is filled with yearning such as he, such as he inspires. And love's image, requited love, dwells within him, but he calls it and believes it to be not love, but friendship. Like the lover, though less strongly, he desires to see his friend, to touch him, kiss him, and lie down by him. And naturally, these things are soon brought about. Now, as they lie together, the unruly horse of the lover has something to say to the charioteer, and demands a little enjoyment in return for his many troubles. And the unruly horse of the beloved says nothing, but teeming with passion and confused emotions, he embraces and kisses his lover, caressing him as his best friend. And when they lie together, he would not refuse his lover any favor if he asked it. But the other horse and the charioteer oppose all this with modesty and reason. If now the better elements of the mind, which lead to a well-ordered life and to philosophy, prevail, they live a, ha a life of happiness and harmony here on earth self-controlled and orderly, holding in subjection that which causes evil in the soul, and giving freedom to that which makes for virtue. And when this life is ended, they are light and winged, for they have conquered in one of the three truly Olympic contests. Neither human wisdom nor divine inspiration can <clears throat> confer upon man any greater blessing than this. Okay, that's it. So, would you agree, uh, it's now one side, now the other. So, how far do they go in this relationship? Now we're talking about the relationship. Is it uh, on some level consummated, as we might say, or not?
consummated, both the unruly horses of the beloved and the lover seem to... How far does it go? Kissing, lying down by, and that's it. That's my that's my answer. Because the lover opposes with modesty and prison. Then when they lie together, you wouldn't refuse them. Well, what's either. the role of the charioteer at the end of this? Opposes. Opposes it all with. Modesty and reason. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, therefore? Like the white horse. That's why you like the white horse, the apologist of the white horse. The so called homosexual relationship is not consummated. And therefore, what would you want to call it? Strange. Friendship. 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 With philosophy. Huh. And huh. 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 common bed. And if so, He's talking about the same sex, is he not? Mm -hmm. Right. So now we shift. If you're with it, let me check. Yes, yes, yes. However, if, however, they live a life less noble and without philosophy, but yet ruled by the love of honor. Probably when they've been drinking or in some other moment of carelessness, the two unruly horses taking the souls off their guard will bring them together and seize upon and accomplish that which is by the many accounted blissful. And when this has once been done, they continue the practice, but infrequently. Since what they are doing is not approved by the whole mind. Dianoia. Understanding. So these two pass through life as friends, but not such friends <laughs> as the others both at the time of their love and afterwards, believing that what they have exchanged, the most binding pledges of love, and that they can never break them and fall into amenity. And at last, when they depart from the body, they're not winged, to be sure, but their wings have begun to grow, so that the madness of love brings them no small reward. For it's the law that those who have once begun their upward progress shall never again pass into darkness and the journey under the earth, but shall live a happy life in the light as they journey together. And because of their love shall be alike in their plumage when they receive their wings. Now he goes back to the original theme, echoing Lysias, Lysias. These blessings so great and so divine, the friendship of the lover will confer upon you, dear boy. But the affection of the non-lover, which is alloyed with mortal prudence and follows mortal and parsimonious rules of conduct, will be yet in the beloved soul the narrowness which common folk praise as virtue will cause the soul to be a, a wanderer upon the earth for 9,000 years and a fool below the earth at last. Third, dear love, thou hast my recantation, which I offered and paid as beautifully and as well as I could, especially the poetical expressions which I was forced to employ on account of Phaedrus. 
Pardon, I pray, my former words and accept these words with favor. Be kind and gracious to me. Do not in anger take me from the art of love which thou hast given me and deprive me not of sight, but grant unto me to be even more than now esteemed by the beautiful. And if our former discourse favors, favors, and I said anything harsh against thee, blame Lysias, the father of the discourse. Make him cease from such speeches and turn him as his brother Polymarchus is turned towards philosophy. But his lover Phaedrus may no longer hesitate, as he does now between two ways, but may direct his life with all signal singleness of purpose towards love and philosophical discourses. So uh, what do you see in the Aries, the difference between the two? Is that then consummated? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Big difference between the two? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really stops the development of the relationship. Pardon me? It stops the development of the relationship. Stops the development of relationship. It's very important. Yeah. And all they have is binding entreaties with one another. Mm -hmm. But there is some development. <clears throat> the wings have begun to grow. Mm. But I, right. Yeah. Beyond what I'm not, they, I'm not I'm not um, I'm not saying that to to refute what you're saying. No, oh, well, that's what I was wondering. Like, uh, why are you saying it? As a matter of curiosity. <laughs> because I said stop development, so there was a development mentioned, right? Well, I can answer your question. You could. Um, as you compare the two, uh -huh. look for their differences, highlight them, and we talk about them. That's all. Because I've got another person in mind. And that's yes, yes, apply, please. I've got another person in mind. That's one that has wings that have not begun to grow at all. And you would say, Barbara? Oh, he's just saying he's bringing in yet another character to the drama. The, he's contrasting, he's saying this person has had some development, whereas there's someone mentioned who has had no development. That's true. So he wanted to emphasize the some development part. Yeah, and that goes along with what you were saying. You were just saying it discontinues. It. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So look here. They're not winging. What kind of a relationship is he talking about? He's talking about Phaedrus and Lysias, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of little things in there that uh, reflect on the beginning of the dialogue as well. Um, one that I noticed was that the uh, just as Lysias was holding the uh, the text of the speech in his left hand, I thought that was uh, insignificant at the time when he said it's there in your left hand, but then. Here we see that the, the good horse is on the, the right, meaning that the the, uh, the horse of desire, which in this case seems to be referring to Lysias, uh, is uh, the left where the speech was. Uh, there was a few other little uh, kind of subtle little thematic mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, that that's there. Yeah, it all together. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, now you can look for dr dramatic things from the beginning to end. Yeah. No, 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 no. And as we were pointing out, that uh, we don't have the divinities. Uh, what we have is people's view of love inherited from their families, and we try to get the beloved to be much like the way we have been schooled and raised. And so the struggle continues. And the greater the difference, because this person may have a totally different family background and relationship, and they may seek to do the same thing to the other, one way or the other. So you have a rather curious situation, do you? <clears throat> or, put it theologically, you can have uh, two people who are following in the trail of different gods with the same consequence. Could you have the, like you said, we're following the family game or pattern. Um, then we could see that if you become, if you understand that family game, then you become more and more like going for a god to mm -hmm. follow. Is that what the 
process would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that especially was the earlier part, which is the way of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But this is in relationships after that's already described and well done and hopefully understood. <laughs> I don't you think the most meaningful distinction for us, at least, is that the second relationship is without philosophy. Yes, right? it's without that, philosophy. So, and it's not approved by the whole mind. So it's, right. it's not a love of the whole for the whole. No. There's no, and there's no, um, what is that called? There's no assimilation to, towards the divine in the second, no. right? No. No. I may be a little bit confused, but are the implications of this that the higher relationship of the two should not be, not be consummated? Should always be. Yeah, yeah, what do you see? I think what I'm seeing is that the implication is that the, the highest example of such a relationship between two people should never be consummated. Hmm. But it should always be governed by reason, temperance, philosophic. Well, the question would might be you might change the might change the text and say, what difference does it make? After all, we can just do this. <clears throat> right, just change it a bit. Hmm? Uh, etc. Right. We could just change it and the same thing can be said. Is that right? We'd say, oh no, no. Want to stay with the text? How important is this? Yeah. Oh, the, I was just, uh, I mean, I hate to bring any history into it, but uh, it's outside of the text, but uh, it is referenced here where he says, then Lysias, it seems, was in the city, the very first thing, mm -hmm. uh, that really makes a strong argument for uh, Lysias being the follower of Ares. Uh, I mean, we know Lysias was a general uh, there, and uh, it seems as though Phaedrus has this uh, philosophical nature. Uh, so it, it, it seems as though in this whole section, Phaedrus is the one following Zeus, and uh, uh, Lysias is the one who's following Ares. His speech shows that. See, now we can take this and go into his speech. When he talks about the non-lover, you can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how would you support that, uh, Danny? Because... At the end, it says, um, "Make Lysias cease from his speeches and turn him as his brother Polemarchus has turned toward philosophy, that his lover Phaedrus may no longer hesitate as he does now between two ways." I get him as like on the fence. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to ask about. Is it, and that that kind of applies to the whole theology, that if everyone, if there are these personality types that follow a God. How do you get that kind of transformation referenced in that section Igmar was just reading from? How does someone switch from one god to another? Is Can that be in the same lifetime? Um, um, the, the, question, the question is really, uh, can anyone following the other gods change by recourse to philosophy? Because this whole thing depends upon philosophy and understanding. He presents this as the model for understanding, Dianoia. And Ares and the other gods, by reference to this, are without philosophy and therefore Dianoia. Mm -hmm. so I, I misspoke then. There is this in assimilation, but it's to Ares who is without philosophy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I misspoke when I said yes. there's no assimilation. Yes. How See, you would you not agree that what we have here also is we have we have Socrates
and Phaedrus. And they're both teachers. And Socrates is taking issue, is he not, with this kind of relationship. And he quite obviously makes it quite clear. Um, so he is undermining Lysias, another teacher, which is what he does in the Theotetus as well. Um, see, in the Republic, there's no question about the fact that he has male female relationships going through the whole republic. There's no, no issue about about that. This is purely one-sided. He, he, him, him. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the way Socrates um, is relating to uh, the student is really a question of uh, The team and Socrates, and he chooses to characterize his teacher, Diotima, a woman, him, male. So the question is, what is the difference between the way in which the symposium talks about the relationship, and obviously male-female? In the Republic, oh, there are innumerable examples of, of uh, male-female relationships running through the whole, whole thing. And he also has a criticism of homosexuality in the Republic at, at, in certain respects because he plays heavily on this one word, imitate. Right? He's, remember, he makes statements like the it's absolutely foolish to be involved with someone who's imitating a woman. So to the degree that anyone is imitating or, or seeing themselves playing a feminine role, they're imitating and therefore that's disallowed. And uh, he says that in many different ways. Uh, but he has a cornerstone, the relationship between men and women. There's no difference in philosophy between men and women. They're all open do the same things, they may then have children, etc. So, if you wanted to do that, you could contrast this dialogue with that with a symposium, and then go back and take another quick look at the Republic, and then you can well, set there's, forward there's, a statement which should be com comprehensive. Sir? There is a, uh, I mean, the one that says the better elements of the mind, that's, that's a relationship between two men, but it's not uh, sexual, from what I get. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and, and describe a wonderful relationship. That's what he said. No sex. No, no, no that's right. He doesn't say that. It's just no. pretty obvious. But it may, in fact, be with Aries. Self-controlled and orderly. Maybe with Aries. Yeah. 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 You mean maybe with sex with Aries? Yeah. 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 There's a there's a point made in the laws. Too. Sure. There's a point made in the laws. Plato's laws. Yeah, the laws. Where he says that the yeah. male, male, and female, female is oh. contrary to nature. Mm -hmm. So tell me, if you think we've done enough here, where do you want to go next time? Symposium. Oh no, we've been there so many times. You want to do it again? <laughs> Recently? God. The Iliad. Look here, wouldn't you agree it would take at least six months to go through the symposium? <laughs> Seven now. <laughs> Don't you think so? What do you think, hey? Mm -hmm. Just as long as time. We can get some help. Agree? On this very important issue? Sure, sure. Help? Help on um, how many months it will take to get to the symposium. Um, I think we could probably do it in four months. Four. Five. <laughs> yeah, something, see, therefore let's not do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you in time.
Well, we have a couple <laughs> couple things we haven't done yet with the phaedrus. Right, we started off the phaedrus at the end. The of course. The ending section. Well, now it's easy to do the first two speeches yourself. But we wanted to see how the end reflected upon the whole, right? Well, yeah, do it. I'll do it. <laughs> no, really. Dance? Right, right. And then one other the thing dance? was... Hold it. Yeah. The time dance? Pardon? The time dance? Tie what? Tie. <laughs> tie. Tie, tie. Tie, man. Or the sophist? Dude. <clears throat> love, man. What about the philebus? Is that what you want to do? Tie. I would vote for the time man. Yeah, my vote's for the time man. Mm. I just want to... I'll tell you what. I want to do the time is. It would be far more interesting to do Proclus's commentary on the time age. <coughs> mm -hmm. See, that would be worthwhile. And that would only take us a couple of years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> even though he uses a different Greek text, and you have to keep that in mind when you're going through Is it available, this text? Yeah. Thomas Teller. And, and uh, yeah, Thomas Teller. The time is. That's I mean, what we Proclus yes, is using a different Greek. Yeah, uses a, uh, an early, but not the most, what we would call an edited text in his translation. Uh, Plato or? There's a new translation, by the way, mm -hmm. of Proclus's commentary on the time units, which is up to date, and it's quite expensive, but it, uh, mm -hmm. not, it's interesting. How about the Theotetus? The Aetidus. I just want to remind you of something, uh -oh. something that you mentioned in Raising the Phaedrus, um, and that was uh, what the theology of Plato does, what Proclus's theology of Plato does with the Phaedrus. I, I, don't, I don't know what section yeah. you're referring to. Yeah, that's okay. We do that. Okay, want to do it? Yeah. Yeah, let's do Proclus's uh, commentary on Plato's Phaedrus, and it's in, it's in Thomas Taylor. Pull it out. Let's do it. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Still in the same thing. Yeah. It's in the theology of Plato? Sure. It's in the work of the theology of Plato? Yeah. Yes. It's all. It's, it's yes, really sure. spread throughout, though. Pardon me. It's it's spread throughout. Well, it's primarily in <coughs> a couple of chapters, though. Yeah, there is. There's a few where it goes like ten chapters in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we might be able to just uh, pull that out of the Thomas Taylor and pass it around vis-a-vis -vis the we website. We do that really well. Right. Right. We could do that. Yeah, it sounds like. Gilbert was saying the way to do it. Good. Thank you. I said the website. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounded like you were thinking of a way of. You putting it on the website or just making some copies? What did you want to do? Scan it and put it on? Oh, I yeah. know. You mean you mean we have a way of yes. we have a way of accessing yes. the text? Yes. And yes. we could put it on. Yeah. We could probably take those pages and. I have send the whole them thing. Out. Yeah. I have the whole thing on a CD. How many pages?